what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and we got to talk about kanye donald trump their personality similarities and how they use similar strategies to manipulate the media now when we talk about personality similarities let's just go ahead and put it out there they're both well-known narcissists and as a matter of fact kim kardashian even said that she thinks kanye likes donald trump so much because they're so much alike now we're not gonna go too deep into it but like one of the similarities is the fact that they love things to be huge this excess of wealth this excess of imagery these grandiose statements that work so well for media kanye is known for saying he has the best of the best and he does the best of the best and donald trump is the same thing as a matter of fact they always want to associate their names with the best of the best of course being narcissists putting their name on their brands and constantly pushing that. Now, not to say that putting your name on something means that you're a narcissist, so let's get into other traits of theirs. For instance, they want you to think of them as special. They always want you to know how great they are. They oftentimes tell you how great they are, and if you talk about any sort of shortcoming or anything that they do that could be perceived as wrong, they will bring that back to the fact that they are special. And Donald Trump and Kanye are very charismatic. They make these bold, grandiose statements with conviction and get a lot of people to believe them. Because they get you to believe that they're special, a lot of times people will dismiss a lot of their shortcomings because they're special. Which works perfect for them because they rarely admit their flaws and they become highly aggressive when they are criticized. With that being said, you're either a friend or an enemy. Everything is black and white with them. You're either a genius or you're dumb. Okay, you've said before that you are very good to your friends and unrelenting to your enemies. When have you been unrelenting? Well, I think I'm unrelenting as an example to Ed Koch. I don't let him forget. I'm unrelenting to people that treat me badly. Mm -hmm. I'm unrelenting to treat friend, you know, to people that treat friends badly, friends of mine. And another thing in common, you'll see what a lot of them is, they can kind of act like babies. They can be pretty childlike. Two reasons that happens to be when it comes to being a narcissist is the fact that narcissists tend to lack empathy. It's hard for them to truly understand how somebody else feels or see other perspectives. And on the other end, they are highly sensitive, just like children. Children are highly sensitive. They aren't even capable of a certain level of empathy because they haven't developed to a certain point and they're still overly sensitive narcissists tend to never lose that now let's get a little bit more into media and how the way they act out in the media tends to manipulate it for their specific goals now kanye and trump are very goal oriented individuals you'll see this all throughout the strategy however let's start here because they speak with so much conviction and they make these bold statements they often usually gather a strong fan base because they're taking a stand against some form of opposition. In Trump's political race, he's taking a stand for middle America and so many other forgotten people. And Kanye is always taking a stand for this artistry and freedom of speech and so many other ideals that he speaks of, which we'll get to later. And because of the stand that they're taking, you'll find that they build fanatical fan bases around them consisting of the people who feel voiceless in that area. But when we think about the fanatical fan bases, this leads into number two, which is their highly contradictory way of carrying themselves within the media. They may be very strong on one point and build a fanatical fan base around them. However, in the next moment, they'll do something completely contradictory from what they've said before. And Big issue in Washington. Would President Trump ban partial birth abortion? Well, look, I'm, I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. Very simple, pro-life. This creates a lot of confusion, but also a lot of sensationalism within media that continues to bring them the attention that they love as narcissistic individuals. This makes them extremely polarizing because they have these unique pairings. Now, if you haven't seen my video on unique pairings, it's really just these contradictory traits that work together and help bring people more attention and also just make them more intriguing and interesting. There's a lot of great people who have those. It's not necessarily a negative thing. I'll put the video in the description below. But because of the way that they act out in their contradictions, people get pretty confused. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call. In the past few days, 
fan bases oftentimes feel betrayed, that's because they feel like they're playing both sides at some point. A lot of Republicans do not like Donald Trump. A lot of Republicans didn't want Donald Trump to win. They're just supporting him because of where he is now. And on one hand, of course, you saw Kanye at one point saying George Bush doesn't like black people. But years later, you see him supporting somebody who does not denounce the KKK. People end up feeling like they're playing both sides. But the problem is the people are in the wrong. They're not playing both sides. They're playing themselves. If you're a true narcissist, you're acting in your own self-interest. So a moment might benefit you. However, when they're over here, it's all about them still. So they're still on their side as far as they see it. They don't really understand some of these contradictions that you speak of. And the third thing they do in the media that works very well for them is the fact that they never own up to their mistakes. Now, I know this sounds like a bad trait typically in life, but when you're talking about the media, especially a lot of times when you have this goal, they are very set on their goals. When people are arguing against them and bringing up these other points, oftentimes you aren't working in your favor by discussing the points against what your goal is. So they constantly spin the conversation to what they want to talk about or they ignore your negativity altogether. Anyone who knows me knows these words don't reflect who I am. I said it, I was wrong, and I apologize. And Kanye and Trump are great at ignoring negativity. Now, of course, negativity is subjective. You might say, hey, I'm just bringing up a valid point. You were completely wrong right here. That stat is not a fact. But as a narcissist, you completely compartmentalize anything that's against your goal and will slow you down as negative. I don't have to tell you, you cannot win in November with those numbers. Well, I say those numbers are going way up once I start going. I have two more people I have to get rid of. I started off with 17 and one by one I knocked them off. And frankly, I, I have to, you know, I have to do what I have to do. Now, once I start on Hillary, you'll see the numbers change. I mean, so when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me. That's an invisible wall. Till I'm out of my moment. Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. Me. You ain't so, got the answers. So, I'm asking you you a question. You ain't been doing the education. So you might be like, Kanye, I'm really just trying to understand you, Kanye, or Trump. That literally is not true. I'm just trying to understand what you meant by that. They will say that you're being negative and you're trying to attack them. This works great for their fans, especially the loyalists, because the loyalists will also say the same thing. They will say, this person's trying to be a distraction. They're liberals or they're Republicans. And these people who don't want to focus on the real issues. Why are you even asking about that? It works great for the media. So it's not a surprise that Trump popularized fake news. And thinking about the fact that they don't own up to their own mistakes too often. I ask you, sir. I'm changing it from fake news, though. D doesn't that undermine? Very fake news. I know, but aren't you? <laughs> they also take ownership over things that aren't necessarily theirs. Now, a lot of the things that Kanye has taken or stolen from other artists is pretty well documented. And then when you look at Trump, you can even consider the fact that he acts as if the state of the economy, not even a year after he got into presidency, was due to his own actions as opposed to what Obama did before him. That obviously doesn't make sense. Now, of course, you can push that narrative for your own agenda. If you're doing it for your own agenda, hey, it makes sense. But if you actually believe that you can make all those economic changes in a short period of time, legislation and all, then I'd say do the math, but you probably don't have enough fingers. Now, one of the last things that work for them so well is they are willing to play dummy in the media. A lot of people don't want to be perceived as dumb. People always call Kanye dumb or stupid or a sellout or he's in the second place. People do this with Trump as well. But remember, these people are highly goal oriented. At the end of the day, one, they have your attention. So that's positive for them. But they're willing to take the heat as long as they can get to their goal. Even look at how Trump already appropriates Kanye West supporting him. He uses Kanye as a symbol of his support in the black community. President Trump actually crediting Kanye with his support in the black community. I have a lot of African-American support and a lot has developed over the last little while with Kanye coming out. Now at the time of this video, we don't necessarily know Kanye's exact usage of this spotlight that he's getting with Trump, but it would not be surprising if he decides to run for president because Kanye is strategic 
as much as he would like people not to think he's strategic, he always speaks in strategy. He's looking at this future plane and we'll get deeper into that. But one of his greatest things as a narcissist is always convincing people that he is special. So as long as you think he's special, that allows you to dismiss some of the things that he's doing right in front of your eyes. And I'd have to point out just the irony of all of this because of how much they are alike. It's very much so understandable why a narcissist would love someone that reminds them of themselves. But in that same way, because of these traits, these two will probably be going against each other in not too long, maybe a couple of years. Don't be surprised if after they both get what they want out of a relationship or if one of them doesn't get what they want out of a relationship, they start to speak against each other as if they aren't as great as they're talking about each other now. Although Kanye and Trump might both be narcissists, there's a great contrast in the style in which they act out their narcissism. Kanye typically comes from a standpoint of victimization and showing some sort of vulnerability while Trump typically comes from a standpoint of being Teflon. Everything rolls off of me. I really don't show you too much. For example, you've heard me talk about both of them taking a stand for things and they're typically being aggressive and they're attacking these people who might be perceived as bullies. The difference is Kanye oftentimes communicates that he feels bullied. They laughing at me. You heard him, they scream at me. They bully me. They bullied me backstage. They said, don't go out there with that hat on. They bullied me backstage. They bullied me. And then they say, I'm in a sunken place. You want not be careful. Just be expressive and understand that all these people are sensitive people. Like you get these celebrities and they get a bad photo and everyone just tears them all the way to shreds and you forget that this is a daughter, a son, a mom, a dad. And, you know, I think I fight for, I fight for all of us. He's talking about him being bullied, but he usually is the bully himself. And Trump just bullies people. Trump never talks about he feels bullied. He might act like he's standing up for somebody else, but it doesn't seem like Trump's ego allows him to feel bullied himself, at least not communicate that. And they both communicate confidently and charismatically, but Kanye West will oftentimes speak on his insecurity and a lot of his confidence that he talks about comes from him fighting his insecurities where Trump just doesn't mention that at all. So it's pretty interesting. If you listen to Kanye constantly, you'll often hear him talking about a standpoint of not letting other people hold him back not letting certain insecurities get in his way. So he's being courageous. He's, he's always talking about bravery and courage because that's what he feels like he has to be to be who he is. No matter how many people tell me, stop believing in yourself. Stop saying what you can do. Stop affirming what you're gonna do and then, and then completing that in real life. The third thing is the fact that Kanye is a lot more so asking for acceptance a lot of times, even though he might say he doesn't care what people think, he usually shows it in the way that he wants to constantly position himself. He'll usually say, I'm like Steve Jobs, I'm like Michael Jackson, I'm like Disney. He speaks on how he wants to be remembered. He speaks on how he wants to be thought of. Y'all wanna go to Africa? I'm standing up and I'm telling you, I am Warhol. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney. Nike. Again, Trump's ego doesn't seem to work that way. It just seems like he's the best. He wouldn't necessarily compare himself to somebody else. He just is who he is. He wants you to realize how awesome he is. If anything, other people might be as awesome as him, where Kanye is like, I'm as awesome as these people that you think are awesome. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that Kanye thinks on a far longer timeline than Trump seems to. Kanye's always talking about this futurism and he wants to be remembered far far into time. That alone starts to reveal some of the strategy that he has. As a matter of fact, a lot of times people mistake tactics and strategy. If Kanye is thinking on a far longer timeline, it'll just be harder for people to make sense of the actions that he has right now because it's connected to a strategy that are beyond any dots that you would typically look to connect. But it also makes it make a lot more sense on why he would put himself next to Trump because Trump obviously is one of the most visible people in the world. Well, Trump is the most visible person in the world. And the last thing is the fact that Kanye hides behind ideals a lot more than Trump does. And it probably has to do with that type of acceptance that he wants. You'll hear Kanye talk about racism, classism, free thought, and all of these things that he wants to promote that he thinks people should have versus Trump not really mentioning too much of that stuff in anything 
saying he talks more ideally is typically because he's in a political field at the time. We're going to drain the swamp of corruption. Funny how that term caught on, isn't it? I, told, I tell everyone, I hated it. Somebody said, drain the swamp. I said, oh, that's so hokey. That is so terrible. I said, all right, I'll try it. So like a month ago, I said, drain the swamp. Place went crazy. I said, whoa, watch this. Then I said it again. Then I started saying it like I meant it, right? And then I said it, I started loving it. And the place loved it. It's drain the swamp. I mean, it's true. It's true. It's true, drain the swamp. Again, that just doesn't seem to be how Trump's ego works. Trump doesn't really have to justify his actions that might seem brash with any ideals saying, I'm doing this for a greater good that people just don't understand right now. Kanye's a lot more, yes, I might seem like this, but people just don't get it. I have all of this good in mind. But anyway, that's it for now. I want to know what you guys think when it comes to Kanye West and Donald Trump. What's your opinion on their personalities, how they act out in the media, and why you think it's effective? No matter how hot the fire gets and how many people talk about them, they seem to come out with what they want most times. But hey, that's just my opinion on that matter. If you have some thoughts you want to share with me directly on it, hey, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Let's talk. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.